During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about how insects can survive the winter. All right, Brian, you got a prop here. You got a corn stalk. What are you, yep. what are you looking for? What are you seeing? Well, first of all, let me just say that insects whole goal is to survive as long as they can and obviously to reproduce. So you got to look at the insect that is the target here. What is damaging your crop? With some insects, the eggs are going to survive over the winter. And then with other insects, it's that actual adult insect that's going to survive. So yes, I am holding a prop but I'm really not going to find a whole lot of anything in here right now. We're lucky we don't have any bugs that are going to try to survive in this stalk. But a couple of the insects I think about are corn rootworms, for example. They're going to be eggs that are going to survive the winter. It's kind of difficult to identify little eggs sitting in the ground. On the other hand, you've got in soybeans, we have bean leaf beetles. Well, the actual adult beetle will burrow itself down into the soil and try to survive winter. So we want to talk about how farmers could possibly control either of these couple of pests. Well, when you think about it, you, you've got to know, like Brian said, which bug you're talking about because some are going to be in a stalk, uh, not the one Brian's holding today, but, but in a stalk, some will be down in the soil. And farmers a lot of times would think about tillage. Well, what about tillage? Because I know in no-till, when I leave their environment undisturbed for the winter, they've got a better shot of survival. What if I do some tillage? And that's one of the things that we talk about all the time with no-till. Yes, there are many advantages, and there are a lot of people around the United States that are well aware of, hey, we want to reduce erosion. We agree. In order to reduce erosion, we need to reduce tillage. So that's awesome. But the problem is when we reduce tillage, we do find more insects because we haven't disturbed their homes. In the old, I'll call them the old days, 50, 60, 70 years ago, people would mow board plow. They would turn that soil over. And in a lot of cases, they would bury some of those insects or just with the process of tillage, they would either disrupt the home or literally kill the insect that they wanted to control. So there certainly are ways that farmers can either, again, affect the home or just flat out kill the insect by doing tillage. But the downside is you're going to have more soil erosion when tillage is done. Well, there's always pros and cons with any decision. Another way that farmers can manage insects is through crop rotation. When you think about the corn rootworms that Brian talked about, well, if they laid eggs in this cornfield and now next year I plant soybeans, well, there's no home for those rootworms next year, no, no host crop for them to feed on, so you're going to have some mortality that way. The big trick for farmers, though, is to make sure you don't have any volunteer corn plants. So if there's corn that didn't make it into the combine or an ear that fell on the ground, make sure if there are any corn plants that sprout in that field that you kill them in some way or another, whether it's with the herbicide or pulling them or whatever it may be, so those rootworm larvae don't have a home next year. Well, one way or the other, most insects are able to survive in our soils, even in the northern United States where it's pretty cold, or at least most of the harmful insects that we really worry about. So we as farmers have to be well aware of what's the insect, what is my crop rotation going to be, do I have a good way to control that bug with insecticide, and if not, maybe I need to start taking a look at tillage or some other way to increase the mortality of that particular insect so it can't survive the winter. Well, one other thing that won't survive the winter is our weed of the week. It's going to start new every spring. Can you identify this week's weed?